So here traditionally, see even in India, the… <laughs> this is a very gender biased law. You can only not slaughter a female cow. You can slaughter a bull, you can slaughter a buffalo. Look at this, gender discrimination. <laughs> you can slaughter me but not you. <laughs> only cow protection because in this culture, this is a pastoral culture, where we have an understanding. Now it's different, but in the past, if there is a bad agricultural year, if there is a famine, we used to have serious famines in this country, if there is a famine, if I have two cows in my house, my children will live. You don't have cows, your children will die. This is a wisdom stuck in people's minds. So when because of my cow, my children lived, I worship this cow because this is the source of my life and my progeny. So there is a very deep engagement with the cow in the sense when I was growing up, we were never fed milk from multiple cows. That specific cow, it has a name and every day they will take you there and you at least give something, you know, one banana, one little grass or something to the cow and always my grandmother will be saying that, this is the… you're like your mother, you're drinking milk from this cow, you must be always grateful to this cow, this kind of thing. Like there's a huge emotion between you and that cow because you're drinking its milk biologically and emotionally you're connected. You're not drinking uh, dairy milk which is million cows and buffaloes and we don't know what else. So this has been the culture. Because of that, because we've drunk the milk of this cow, if we tomorrow want to eat the cow, that is considered cannibalism, not cow slaughter. I want you to understand this. It is deep-rooted in us because like our mother, this cow gave us milk. Tomorrow how to kill it and eat it up, this is considered cannibalism and we said you never kill the cow. But they allowed other big animals to be killed also. And this methane gas you're talking, this is not a problem in India, this is United States problem. All the statistics and stuff, we just import it from the West and we think it's like this. In United States, how the cows are kept is a completely different matter. If you go into your cattle thing, it's something you must go and see, then you will not ask this question again. You must go and see there will be half a million or one million cattle in one place. There will be not a speck of green because so many animals moving, full of dung and everything. All in sheds, sometimes they move them out for exercise and again back. On the highway side, if they are there a kilometer away, the kind of sounds they are making, it will churn your stomach because they are intelligent enough to know that they are going to be slaughtered. You must see the screams of the cows. Once you go there, never again you will touch anything because it will… basically it will churn up something within you. Why I am saying this is, the cow is an animal where I have seen this personally, somebody that I knew. This is a lady, she named this cow as Lakshmi. It always was with her, thirty years that cow has become, it's very old but still with her. This lady died at eighty-seven. This cow came and just stood in front of the house, did not move from there, refused to eat. Two days later, it just fell dead right there. And I have seen cows. If you are very attached to it and you are in some grief, you are not even with the cow, cow is somewhere else, but it knows tears are flowing from the cow's eyes. So because it has human emotions, we said you cannot kill this because it is exhibiting human emotion. If you kill it, it amounts to cannibalism. When there is such a sensitivity, if you say, in front of my house you will slaughter, obviously there is going to be a problem. So in this part of the country, there is no such sentiment, so they did not pass the law. I think it's a very sensible thing to do, isn't it? But every doctor in the world is telling you, red meat is the source of every goddamn disease you have, so you better change. <laughs> it is not… it is not a religion, it's a certain sense of humanity. Humanity finds expression in various kinds of aesthetics. This is our aesthetic. What about the minorities living in those areas, Sadhguru? They can eat whatever they else they want. But when it is imposed, the ban is imposed, <laughs> they, they cannot. 
Suppose I like to eat you. <laughs> you denying me my food. I enjoy human flesh. How can you pass a law against it, I'm asking? Hello? There, there is a law already that <laughs> you, you cannot eat humans, but… That is that, what… there is already the a law that you can't eat a cow. The question is passing of the law itself. No, no. I'm saying, see, you cannot eat a human being. Why? Because it's a human being. Now, we drank the milk of the cow, we have shared emotions with the cow, we don't see it as separate because in the villages the cow lives in your house. There is no barn somewhere, it lives with you in the same house. So what is grown up with you, lived with you, shared life with you, you don't suddenly kill and eat it. Then you can as well eat your mother, what's the problem? I'm saying, what's the problem? It's good food. So I have taste for human flesh, how can you stop me from eating it? Don't start such an argument, it's not good. Thank you, Sadhguru.